Hello again, this is Jesse. Now that I've done my Christian and my mental health <coughs> video essay, I'm going to tackle politics. And the source of motivation for this meditation, um, there's this uh, woman, uh, Maria Bartiromo, I believe, that works in finance and economics that's a commentator on a business channel and on Fox News and apparently she spoke on how the elites in politics, business and media didn't get it and didn't understand the American people and I think that that's a confusion, that that's an error. They clearly understood the movement, they clearly understood what Donald Trump stood for, stands for and they clearly understood what the people stand for and they didn't want it there was no confusion they clearly understood it and it was something they did not want and they were willing to use they were willing to use people like Paul Ryan and Mitt Romney and all the rest who you know who are political warriors for businesses. Okay. Again, in our society, whether it be a municipality, a county, or state, or the federal government, there is a small amount of individuals who control power and who manipulate politicians with money and who control the masses with the media. That little, I'm, I'm going to call it the Illuminati, the New World Order, does exist. Those individuals have no interest in Donald Trump's form of government because they're going to lose. They're no longer in charge. They're no longer in control. They can't manipulate politicians to making policies that benefit their special interest group or their companies. The election of Donald Trump should reflect that the people are now in charge of the country. And the people don't want illegal immigration reform. <coughs> and the people don't want irresponsible government spending. And the people don't want high taxes. And the people don't want an inept, uh, you know, incompetent, uh, uh, you know, war on terror. Every single terrorist attack, what comes out of it, um, that the FBI failed. The FBI failed in 9-11. The FBI failed in San Bernardino, in Orlando, in Boston, in New York City. They had the necessary information to be concerned to conduct proper investigations that should have led them to the arrest, uh, and they failed. The people don't want that. The people want someone who will demand a correct uh, police operations that are not subject to political correctness. Obama's instructions to law enforcement to be uh, respectful of Muslim communities, you know, we should be respectful of all people. I believe in human rights. I don't want anybody's human rights to be violated. That doesn't mean you don't investigate suspicious people for criminal behavior. And when your leadership is telling you you must follow a certain attitude, that you must let people from Mexico, uh, you know, break into the America, the United States of America, uh, that's not helpful. So Donald Trump, what Donald Trump stands for as far as stopping illegal immigration, hurts companies because they don't have a cheap, a source of cheap labor. What we saw here in the last four years <coughs> was the Congress and President obsessed with bringing in as many Mexicans, Cubans, and, and Arabs into the country. And what about the American people? What about the 90 million plus who are not working because they have chosen not to work? So you, there's no reason to be, you know, bringing in all these people from foreign lands if you have 90 million Americans who should work. And I think Rush Limbaugh makes a point, a very good point. If they're not working, how are they feeding themselves? Who's paying their rent and mortgage? Who's buying them shoes? Who's putting gas in their vehicle? Who's paying for their cellular phones, their satellite and, and cable television? 
you know, it, it, it directly relates to society and what it is we want to live in. And this is, uh, you know, all, I'm going to say all, most of, most of the um, articles that I have done on politics lead me to the point of understanding what it is that destroys societies. We want to go to the worst society. What would be the worst society? I guess would be uh, right now Iran and Cuba and a lot. Of, I mean, just could keep going on. A lot of African continent nations. Um, and it it really starts with the person. It starts with the citizen, the individual, who who decides that they're no longer going to be part of the process. They're not going to register to vote. They're not going to vote. They're <coughs> They're going to be afraid of their government. They're going to be afraid of the military dictatorship. And they're no longer going to participate. They're going to have a lot of complaints, but they're just not going to be part of the process. You want to destroy society, convince people that there's no reason for them to try anymore. You want to destroy society, convince people that there's no reason for them to, to work at having a healthy, beneficial society. You can destroy society. Uh, Islam, the Quran did not destroy Afghanistan, Iran, Iraq, uh, Jordan, Saudi Arabia, Sudan, you know, name it. That's not what destroyed those societies. What destroyed those societies, individuals who are just like you and I, who understand good and bad, right from wrong, uh, just for whatever reason decided that they're just not going to bother anymore. And I can make the case because evil, as bad as it is, it's a small minority. A very small minority. Not, not just a minority. It's a very small minority. And if we don't understand that, you know, we're not going to accomplish anything. So if the majority is, okay, let's say maybe has, you know, this and that evil energy in it. But nobody's perfect. And if you're without God, then you're in the realm of evil. You're in the realm of Satan. But for the, for the most part, people are not, you know, trying to uh, <coughs> harm others. They're not keeping their government in line. They're not fighting so they're not under a communist regime or a military dictatorship. But they're not trying to harm people. I'm pretty sure the people in North Korea aren't trying to harm their The majority are not trying to harm their neighbors. Why they allow a military regime to have so much control over their lives is very questionable, especially when you understand that um, that the majority, which, which has a high degree of, of good morality, should always win. I keep saying if there's a war between a hundred million people and ten million people, the hundred million should always win. Now, you can tell me, well, yeah, but the ten million have military tanks, they have uh, automatic weapons, they have grenades, it, well and good. A <coughs> hundred million people should be able to dominate ten million people, regardless of their weapons. Even if those weapons are nuclear weapons, the discriminating factor is fear. The discriminating factor in the United States of America, the reason that, the reason for Obama is fear. That's why Obama got, got elected. Because they were convinced that the way George W. Bush was administrating the country was wrong and something bad was going to happen to them. So the liberal news media made them afraid, and they had to react to that fear. And right now the news media is making people afraid of Trump. But businesses who, who have, for a very long time, manipulated um, government to the extent that they shape policy, that they literally call Paul Ryan on the phone and tell him, we want you to write this bill because it benefits us. They no longer will have power. 
Now, I'm concerned that Mr. Trump is appearing as if the Republicans have taken control of him and are now giving him his marching orders. You you can't have a society where your people know that their efforts are disrespected. When Obama and the Congress pay more attention to people entering the country illegally than to the citizens of the of the country, a lot of people in the country are going to wonder, well, why in the heck are they bothering? If you want to destroy a society, convince the majority of the people that is no longer necessary for them to try. The reality is that every day we have to try. Every day we have to go to work. Every day we have to earn a living. Every day we have to be responsible with our money. Every day we have to teach our children with love and wisdom. Every day we have to be kind, polite individuals who don't attack our neighbors. Life is a work in progress. Every day we have to do what's right and avoid what is wrong. Uh, America is in a very critical uh, point in time in our history because $20 trillion is too much of a national debt reality to crisis. How is that going to be paid down? Now, I'm, I'm smart and I can add, I subtract, I subtract, I know percentages. You know, uh, it is true that <coughs> if you get American businesses to start producing, tax revenue will go up. And if you get citizens to start producing, tax revenue will go up. And if you have tax revenue go up and government spending less, government being responsible in spending, then you can pay down the national debt. That's true. That's what I was, was thinking about. What is it? the first thing that Trump needs to do? And I think the first thing that Mr. the president-elect Trump needs to do, uh, you got to respect the person and, and respect them by using his title, the first thing that he needs to do is he needs to stand up and emphatically, emphatically speak um, eloquently about the value of life and America's commitment to the value of life. That's the first thing he needs to do. He needs to let the world know we will not tolerate human rights abuses. He needs to let the world know we will not conduct business with nations that violate human rights of their people. I think that's the first thing that he needs to do. Just just a roar and growl on behalf of humanity, of the decency of humanity, of how people shouldn't be denied, uh, you know, for people shouldn't be murdered or slaughtered uh, for any reason. Arab nations should not be against Israel just because they're Israeli. You know, and after he does that, then there does need to be a, a proactive tax policy, but that will be directly related to the budget. So first he needs to write a budget. Once he writes a budget, then he can build tax policy. And then, I mean, after that, it's government. Trump is there for the federal government. He's the administrator of the federal government. He's the administrator that looks at the accounting ledgers and see and, and and evaluates to see if there's any irregular irregularities that may uh, point to the fact waste mismanagement. That's his job. His job is to manage the federal government. Donald Trump's job is not to manage society. It is not to tell people what to think. It is not to tell people what to feel. In a certain degree, it is what to tell people what to do if they're going to be harming somebody else. But once Donald Trump gets the federal government in order, where the federal government isn't taking a lot of money out of the private sector and transferring it to the government sector, the public sector, you know, <coughs> then it's our lives. 
how are we conducting our business? And in conducting our business and administrating and managing our lives, we have to understand that the way modern life is organized in the United States of America, there's going to be a point in time in our lives where we're, one, not physically able to work, or two, maybe just don't want to work anymore. So we, we have to provide for our own um, retirement with everything that comes with that. Um, Health care. We have to be people who understand that it's irresponsible to to have $700 invested in cell phones, satellite, uh, satellite cable television, and uh, internet, and not have health insurance. Now, I have to qualify that because I have no respect for insurance companies because insurance companies have no respect for us. There's more than adequate information on how many insurance companies have tried to deny their customers the services that their customers were paying for. Why am I going to pay $150 a month to a company that is going to try to do everything to deny me the services they said they would provide if and when I need those services. It makes no sense whatsoever. I don't see any reason for that. I see a reason for being responsible. I should be responsible. In the administration of my life, I should be responsible. But giving money to a company that will even commit crimes to deny services concerns me. Makes me wonder why I should do it. I have insurance. I have uh, personal uh, <coughs> what is it? Accidental death and injury insurance because I drive a vehicle. I'm concerned that some dummy may harm me and will not be protected. The person who destroyed my taxi had no insurance. The person who, who destroyed my taxi had no insurance, was driving drunk, and was using the street as their own personal racetrack. I mean, again, I've said it before, I could probably understand the no insurance, you know, if your personal finances don't, aren't, you know, aren't capable of contributing to having insurance. So I, I could probably understand that. But if you're a person who's uninsured, why are you driving like a crazy person? If you're a person who doesn't have automobile, automobile insurance, why are you driving intoxicated? You know, it's bad enough that you're not being a responsible member of society by having insurance. But on top of that, you're going to drive like a crazy person and you're going to drive drunk? That I have no understanding for. So being a responsible member of society is important. We're taught to be a responsible. We're taught that we don't have to pay for health care. And, and the 20% who don't pay their health care bills increase the cost to the 80% who do. You know. So government should be responsible. Donald Trump should be responsible. Government shouldn't be spending our tax dollars on nonsense foolishness. Government national debt should never have grown to twenty trillion dollars. Doesn't matter if it was Obama or somebody else. Yes, Obama doubled it. Obama added to the national debt more than all the presidents of the United States of America combined. That's poor administration. So what we need for Donald Trump today is proper administration. You know, and we need to be patient. You know, sometimes I hear something in the news. And I want to start barking, but then I realize you, you can't trust that news. You cannot, you can't even trust Fox News. You definitely cannot trust CNN, MSNBC, ABC, CBS, NBC. You know, so many newspapers that have moved away from the actual newspaper to online websites. You just can't trust them. They work for the companies that want to manipulate government, so government will write policy that will let, allow them to make money. 
um, there was an essay, not a documentary, very long documentary, of what is called the, what they call the Seven Sisters, and the Seven Sisters were the oil producers, and they show their activities in certain countries, and they show the death, carnage, and destruction related to oil production it oil production in this country. Um, the Ottoman Empire encompassed most of the Middle East. After World War I, the Ottoman Empire was um, divided into different regions, and they were and they were divided into different regions by the British, the French, and the German. So if you you want to understand, you know, why there's French in Africa. That's why. If you only want to understand why there were British in Africa, that's why. Because these individuals said, well, this part belongs to me, this part belongs to me, this part belongs to me. And why wouldn't you, if, if you were, now, to be completely honest, the individuals in charge of the Ottoman Empire were not manipulated into participating and being involved in World War One. The individuals in charge of the Ottoman Empire chose pursuing greed to be participate. So they did it to themselves. So the people of this region said they really want to find someone to blame for having outsiders interfering in their countries need to look to, to their own leadership for being in, for dragging them into World War One, and then that having been the consequences that led to the partition of the territories of what used to be known as the Ottoman Empire. <coughs> and the reason I say you have to watch, you should watch this this essay. You can find it on YouTube, either in part or in whole. It's because you start to see how oil production in the Middle East and in African nations it contributed to foreign nations' involvement in those areas which also contributed to um, death, carnage, and destruction. Human rights violations, mass murder was done by people that America called allies for the purposes of protecting American companies' interest in oil production. When I first started my university experience in the community college here in El Paso, Texas, I had a professor who, who jokingly said that World War II was started so Ford Motors could sell cars in Europe. <coughs> and you laugh at that kind of cynicism and skepticism, but then you realize it's actually true. And when we're dealing with the issue of, of, of American government, the people, and the people, and what and, and the elements that manipulate, you know, you gotta understand that there are there are special interests and there are business people who manipulate politicians so the politicians will help them. You gotta you gotta ask me why John you gotta answer why John Boehner Paul Ryan, Mitch McConnell, other so-called Republicans were so obsessed with illegal immigration reform, with uh, refugee status to people from Arab nations, for uh, Cubans, the Cuban re refugees. You know, why were they so obsessed to bring so many people into the United States of America when America owes twenty trillion dollars? where there's 90 million people not working, where, you know, you have less than 2% growth in the economy, in GDP, uh, and most of these things people will not understand. People honestly believe that unemployment is under 5%. American unemployment right now would calculate between 12% and 20%. And that's because the Obama administration literally stops counting people 
who stops looking for work. If you know math, if you know statistics, if you know percentages, you'll understand why if you take out 40 million people, statistically, things are going to look better. Realistically, things are bad. 90 million plus people not working, that's bad. But if you remove a lot of people from your numbers, statistically, it will look like it's good, but it's not. It's like I was telling the person that the reason that Obama claims that he has deported more people than anybody else <coughs> is that when a Border Patrol agent on the border uh, stops someone and returns them to Mexico or goes through the process of them returning to Mexico, Obama con considers that a deportation. It's catch and release, but Obama considers it. He'll add it to deportation. And it's politics. The reason Obama did not, um, in, the Cong in the Democratic Congress, did not follow through on illegal immigration reform was politics. That's a simple answer to it. Nothing more than politics. If Obama and the Democrats in the Congress had pursued illegal immigration reform to the point that they got it to the Congress, the President signed it, it became law, they would have lost. I mean, the, the Democrats lost big on 2010, on 2012, on 2014, uh, 2016, and it's because of the policies. But if they had followed through on that, on legal immigration reform, Obama would only have been a one-term president. And the Congress would have, would have, you would have had more Republicans in the Congress than you do now. Which doesn't matter. What we're seeing is it doesn't matter if you have Republicans in the Congress, they're still going to pursue policies that are against the will of the people. Policies that are not part of proper, proper, correct administration of the federal government. American people are very nice people, they're very kind people, they'll help you out but they're not going to destroy themselves trying to help you. American people are not going to destroy themselves trying to help the refugees from Arab nations. The American people are not going to destroy themselves trying to help um, people from Mexico entering the country illegally, or Cubans. You're a fool if you take all your money and just go give it to a homeless person. You can't pay your rent. You can't pay your groceries. You can't pay your utilities. You can't buy necessary medicine for your children. You know, you're just a fool. There's nothing wrong with helping people. But you got to administrate it properly. And I think the biggest, and <coughs> staying on focus, I believe in staying on focus, <coughs> when Maria Bartiromo um, stated that they were confused, they were not confused. They knew exactly what we stood for. They knew exactly what we fought for. And what we stood for, what we stand for, threatened them and because they threatened them, they're going to fight it any which way that they could. And we need to understand that because going forward, they are going to continue to fight us. They want high taxes. They want a high national debt. They want to control you. They want to take financial power out of your hands so it is in their hands. You know, people like Alex Jones it, it has been talking about this corruption in government and this uh, you know, new world order and secret societies, and you know, and, and to what extent they're willing to hold on to power for a very long time. And he's right. There, people, you mentioned new world order, Illuminati. You're, you're considered a radical or or some kind of crazy person. But the reality is that this, all of this stuff is happening. 